Chris Kramers and Lizanne Froon disappeared on April 1st, 2014, while they were hiking the El Pianista Trail in Panama. Chris was 21 and Lizanne was 22. They both grew up in Amersfoort in Netherlands. Chris was described as an open, creative and responsible person. Lizanne was described as aspiring, optimistic, intelligent and a passionate volleyball player. Chris had just finished up her studies in cultural social education and specialised in art education at the University of Utrecht. Lizanne graduated with a degree in applied psychology from Deventer. A few weeks prior to leaving for Panama, Lizanne had moved in with Chris in a dorm room in Amersfoort and they worked together at restaurant. They both had saved up money for six months and planned to go to Panama together for a six-week vacation. They hoped to learn Spanish and wanted to do something significant for the locals, particularly volunteering with the children. The trip was supposed to be a reward for Lizanne for graduating. They both arrived in Panama on March 15, 2014. They toured the country for two weeks before arriving in Bouquet on March 29th to live with the local family for a month while they volunteered with children. On April 1st, around 11am, they went hiking near the clouded forests that surrounded the Baru volcano on the El Pianista Trail. Some sources say they took a dog with them that belonged to the owners of the Pianista restaurant, but this was never confirmed. On Facebook, they had said they intended to walk around Bouquet and it was reported they had been seen having brunch with two Dutch men before going on the trail. Some sources claim that the owners of the restaurant became alarmed when their dog returned home that night without Chris and Lizanne. Lizanne's parents stopped receiving messages, which both women had been sending to their families daily. On the morning of April 2nd, the woman missed an appointment with a local guide. On April 6th, their parents arrived in Panama with police, dog units and detectives from the Netherlands to conduct a full-scale search of the forests for 10 days. The parents offered a reward of $30,000 for any information leading to the whereabouts of Chris and Lizanne. Ten weeks later, on June 14, a local woman turned in Lizanne's blue backpack, which she reported finding by a riverbank near her village of Alto Romero. The backpack contained two pairs of sunglasses, $38 in cash, her passport, a water bottle, her camera, two bras, and both their phones. Their phone showed around six hours after the beginning of their hike, someone had dialed 112 and 911. The first distress call attempt was made by Chris at 4.39pm. Another attempt was made shortly after this from Lizanne's phone at 4.51pm. However, none of the calls got through due to the lack of reception in the area. On April 4th, Lizanne's phone battery died after 5am and the phone was never used again. Chris's phone did not make any more calls either but was intermittently turned on to search for reception. Between April 5th and 11th, the phone was turned on multiple times without ever entering the correct PIN code. On April 11th, the phone was turned on at 10.51am and was turned off for the last time at 11.56am. Lizanne's camera contained photos from April 1st, suggesting that they had taken a trail at the overlook of the Continental Divide and wandered into some wilderness hours before their first attempt at making emergency calls, but with no signs of anything unusual. On April 8th, 90 flash photos were taken between 1am and 4am, apparently deep in the jungle and in near complete darkness. A few photos show that they were possibly near a river or a ravine. Some show a twig with plastic bags on top of a rock and another one shows the back of Chris's head. The discovery of the backpack created a new search along the Culubro River. Chris's denim shorts were found atop a rock on the, on the opposite bank of the tributary, a few kilometres away from where Lizanne's backpack had been discovered. A rumour claimed that the shorts were found zipped and neatly folded, but pictures of the shorts published in 2021 disproved this information. Two months later, closer to where the backpack was discovered, a pelvis and a boot with a foot inside was found. Soon, at least 33 widely scattered bones were discovered along the same riverbank. DNA testing confirmed they belonged to both girls. Lizanne's bones still had some skin attached to them, but Chris's bones appeared to have been bleached. A Panamanian forensic anthropologist later claimed that under magnification, there are no discernible scratches of any kind on the bones, neither of the natural or cultural origin. There are no marks on the bones at all. Had natural decomposition of the body near a river caused the bones, which are heavier than water, to sink to the bottom of the river, Markings on the bone should have been visible from friction with the riverbed. 
One bone fragment of Chris's involved a bleached half part of her pelvis. Under natural decomposition, a pelvis, especially from a younger person, does not break in half. It is not likely to have been caused by predators. The bone was missing joint tissue that remains intact for years under natural decomposition. In late August 2014, a fragment of skin was found on the banks of Rio Calubre River that could be Lausanne's after forensic analysis was conducted. This was in an early stage of decomposition unlike the physical remains found of Chris. Several indications from third party investigators point to criminal human activity. Do let me know what you thought of this case down below and I'll see you for the next video.